Hello, LCC and everyone else watching on YouTube and watching on the website. I want to thank you for joining us. And before we start the sermon, just like always, let's go in a word of prayer. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. God, we just ask for an encounter with you today, an encounter with you through the word. I pray, Father, that you encounter us in our minds and in our hearts and in our imaginations today. God, out of my brokenness and weakness, I'm just fully relying and trusting in you. God, we thank you and we lift this day to you. In your name we pray. Amen. So, one of my favorite movies of all time is Lord of the Rings. And I remember I, I watched it in high school and a lot of my friends wanted to watch it. I didn't know much about Lord of the Rings. I didn't know you know, about the story because I never read the books. I didn't watch that really old cartoon. So I didn't know what to expect. So I get to the theater and man, I was blown away. Blown away by the story, um, the adventure. And I was just like, wow. I loved it so much that I watched it three times in theaters. And then when the Two Towers came out, I lined up for over two hours just so that I could get good seats in the theater. We didn't have reservations back then. So I lined up and I watched that movie and it was amazing. So the Lord of the Rings, it, it is a story about this little man, okay? This little man with hairy feet named Frodo. And Frodo, he is this ordinary guy. He comes from an ordinary life. You know, he's just living a very simple life. And all of a sudden, he's thrust into this bigger narrative, this big story where all of a sudden he has to save the whole world by destroying this powerful ring. But there's this powerful villain, Sauron, who's going after him and he's trying to hunt him down. And when you watch the movie, the movie's full of adversity. It's full of problems. It's full of pain. It's full of emotion. It's full of anxiety. It's full of trouble. And it seems like that a good story has to have seemingly negative elements in it. That these negative elements like trouble, adversity, is what really makes the movie great. It's what makes the story awesome. It's what makes the story exciting. I don't think, now this is my theory, I don't think that you can have a great movie without trouble, without pain, without adversity. A movie that has a story of just comfort or just those hobbits smoking, I think would make a really boring movie. So my question today is this, do you want your life to be an awesome story? Do you want your life right now to be an awesome story. And if you do, can we have an awesome story without pain? Can we have an awesome story without trouble? Or are they prerequisites for a great story? Are they prerequisites for a great life? The Bible tells us that the most blessed life is one that will have worthy trouble. Our passage today comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 33, and then we'll skip to verse 38. It's a story of the time the angel appeared to Mary. So let's read it. So Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 33, it goes like this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. 
his kingdom will never end. Then skip to verse 38. She replies to the angel, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. When you look and read this, this was Mary's Frodo moment. You know, Mary went from this ordinary teenager who's getting ready for a marriage and getting ready, ready for, a, for a wedding. This ordinary teenager, to all of a sudden, she's thrust into a bigger story. She's about to change history. There are two things that we see with Mary that help with this transformation. First, she became part of something bigger than herself. And then second, she followed through on God's difficult plan. And we should do the same. So the first key to living out an awesome story is that we have to be a part of something bigger than us. You know, when you go to the, when you see the movie, uh, Frodo, uh, he's this very simple person. He's just living this simple life, living in his home, the Shire. He's not very special. Like I said earlier, he's very short. You know, hairy feet. He's not like this massive warrior with tattoos and so strong. He's very small. But one day, he's given this very special ring. A ring that would determine the fate of the world. And Frodo's all of a sudden, he's thrust into this bigger story. A story bigger than himself. He's all of a sudden, he's joining this big, massive war. You know, with monsters, with this great villain. There's danger. There's adventure. The thing is, Frodo could have said no. Frodo could have said, you know, no, no, no thanks. You know, he could have refused to be part of the greater story. He could have just went back home, back to the Shire and lived a very comfortable life. He could have said no and said, it's too dangerous, too much trouble. It's not worth saying yes to. But if he did that, he would have missed out on adventure. He would have missed out on something great. Most importantly, he would have missed out in, of the grand narrative of the danger that he was about to live in. Like this also was, he was also part of the story. He would have lost his home and everything he loved because Sauron was going to put an end to everyone else unless Frodo did something about what he was being called to. And the same thing here is happening in Mary's story. She's being confronted with this very big decision to accept her role in history or to ignore it, to say no. You know, the angel told her in verse 31, he says, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. What pressure? Okay, this is not like an ordinary pregnancy. You know, when my kids were born, like there were not all these heaped on expectations on them. So what pressure? You know, what a change of plans. Remember, Mary's engaged to Joseph. She's about to get married, okay? They're probably planning their life together. Oh, who's going to bring the wine to the wedding? And actually, Mary, God wants you to be pregnant, actually. And you're going to bear a son. It's not going to be an ordinary son. He's going to be the, the savior of the world. No big deal. I would have been overwhelmed. I would have been overwhelmed with this news. Like, Mary, you're, you're going to be pregnant. And, you know, pregnancy is no joke. I was there twice. I wasn't pregnant, but my wife was pregnant, but I was there and I watched everything. And to say that it was easy, oh, I would never say that. It was, it was, it was hard. It, it was, it was difficult. Giving birth to a baby is no joke. But it was even worse for Mary to be pregnant outside of marriage. Okay, to be pregnant outside of marriage in that culture would be a no-no. 
You know, people would heap lots of shame on her. They would heap shame on this predicament. And then what about Joseph? Would he buy that story? You know, imagine, imagine you're engaged and you get to see your fiance and then she announces, I'm pregnant. You know, huh? what? But we didn't do anything. It was the power of God. Would you believe that? Would you believe that? We'd be like, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> or would you call Maury? Like, it, it's hard. It's difficult. This is a very difficult predicament. This would be a deal breaker. This wasn't going to be easy. She's saying yes to a lot of suffering. She's saying yes to a lot of trouble. But at the same time, at the same time, she's also saying yes to a great story. She's saying yes to carrying the savior of the world, the savior who's gonna make everything right. So yes, there's trouble, yes, it's difficult, but it's going to be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. And she embraced this story. She embraced it. No, despite all the trouble, despite all the difficult circumstances, she embraced the story, and today her story continues to, to be told to billions of people. It's known. It's one of the most well-known stories in the world. We are invited to be part of the exact same story, the same narrative, this grand narrative that God is telling we can be a part of this story. You know, think of the greatest movie plots. You know, we too have a villain. You know, Satan, the adversary. We have enemies, idols trying to distract us, trying to put obstacles in our ways. We have temptations and trouble. Yet we also have power. Yet we also have the power and love of God, the companionship of God as he keeps his promises to us. You know, we have friendship with other people who are on the exact same wish mission with us, the same adventure with us. But the most incredible part is that this story is reality. It is true. And you can know it's true. You can find evidence in history philosophy, ethics, anecdotal experience, our experiences in encountering God's love, encountering God's promises. You know, the problem is a lot of people, and even some Christians, they don't want to put in the effort to know if the story is true. You know, what do you have to lose to, to look in, to examine, to see if this is true? because you potentially could miss out on such a great story. You know, growing up, uh, my family, we, we loved to travel. Uh, we always traveled all, all sorts of places. We went on a cruise to Alaska, we went to the Bahamas. We went, we went to a lot of places. And one of my dreams uh, was to go to Europe. I wanted to go to Europe and I wanted to see the, the castles in Scotland. Um, I, I love to go to Paris. I'd like to go to London, um, eat the food there. And so I wanted to go there. I, it was my dream to go there. And my parents thought the same thing. So they decided that they're going to go to Europe. But I made an excuse that I had to stay home for school. So instead of going to Europe, I'm like, oh, I have school, so I don't think I can come. And... I didn't. So my parents, uh, they left me and my brother behind and my parents and my sister went on this month long trip to Europe. And so while they were gone, me and my brother, we, we didn't know how to cook. Uh, we didn't know how to cook. We didn't know how to do laundry. And so my parents, they left us with a lot of frozen food. They left us with like Hungry Man, Michelinas, um, 
pizza pops, frozen pizzas. And that's what we ate for the whole month. So my parents come home and they showed us all these videos and pictures. Uh, actually, their, their camera got stolen. So it, it was bad too. They lost pictures. So we had to like freeze frame a lot of the, of the video thing to so that we have some pictures. Um, but they, they showed us where they ate and where they went and there's in the castles and all these places and all the food. So while we were eating Hungry Man for five straight days, my parents, they were eating authentic European dishes. They were walking in castles and seeing all these historical sites, things that I wanted to do. And then seeing all their pictures, seeing, hearing all their stories, it made me jealous. It made me jealous because that could have been me. But no, I decided to stay for school for some reason. I could have been in London. But I missed out because of all of these bad excuses that I kept making. Likewise, many people miss out. They miss out on something great. They miss out on a great adventure. Many people don't want to be part of this story. They keep making excuses. They keep, instead they're trying to create their own stories. Stories apart from God. They want to create stories of just comfort. They just want to create stories of least resistance possible. If we do that, we will miss out on the adventure that God wants us to be on. In the case of Frodo, he was able to succeed, not just because he made this one-time decision to do the right thing, but he succeeded because of friendship. There's a reason why the first movie is called The Fellowship of the Ring. It's because he was sharing the adventure and trouble with great friends, these great warriors. He was not alone. And it's the same with us. It's not about just making that one-time de one time decision or that saying that one prayer one time. It's about doing this together with other people. It's too difficult to do the Christian life alone. We need to find other people who are on the same mission with us, who are on the same adventure. We not need to find people that give us the, you know, the Mary or Frodo vibe in their relationship with God. We need to spend time with them. We need to struggle with life together. You know, maybe it's joining a Bible study group or maybe joining a worship team. I don't know, whatever your talents are. Maybe you need to find a mentor. You do whatever it takes to not do it alone. Because the adventure, it has too much trouble. It has too much adversity to handle on our own. And this leads to my next point. We must follow God's difficult path. Not avoid God's difficult path but we must follow through God's difficult path for us. You know, in, in the movie, uh, Frodo's path to destroying the ring was not easy, okay? It wasn't just a movie of him just walking up a hill and drop, drops the ring in the fire, and then it's done. No, it was hard. You know, his quest to Mount Doom was so difficult. There was so much adversity. You know, you got monsters. They, they're trying to kill them. They had to travel through mountains and scary forests. They had to travel through the winter, a winter storm. And then, and then in one part, they got separated from their group. And then it was just him and Sam. So often they were tired. They were exhausted. There's one part where Frodo gets stung by a huge spider, this giant spider. And he goes into like this death-like coma he often got tempted by the ring's power they had Gollum. Gollum was stalking them trying to steal the ring and then at the end of the movie they finally get to mount doom and they're like completely exhausted you know there's this scene where like sam is carrying frodo so man it's just a beautiful picture of friendship 
You know, he never left Frodo's side. He's carrying, he's carrying Frodo to the finish line. And they finally destroy the ring and then they rid evil from the world forever. You know, all that work and effort, you know, despite it being so hard, was worth it. All that suffering was worth it. But it started with a willingness from Frodo to be uncomfortable. It started with a willingness to decide, you know what? I'm going to, even if I have to suffer, I am going to go through with this because it is worth it. In, in our Bible story, Mary had that same willingness. You know, verse 38 reads, she says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. You know, it's, it's interesting. Mary answers with humility. She doesn't respond with an excuse or said, oh, that's hard or, oh, I don't think I can do it. She responds with, I am the Lord's servant. She acknowledges that she is first God's servant. So she will say yes to this mission. You know, servants in that culture, by definition, they don't get to choose the easy life. They have to do stuff that other people didn't like. But despite the difficult path, Mary knew that God's plan would be worth it. You know, many Christians are quick to say yes to the good parts of the gospel. They're quick to say yes to the good parts of the story. You know, when you talk about heaven, they're like, yeah, I'm down for that. Talk about love of God. Yeah, okay, yes, I like that. Talk about forgiveness. And, All right, forgive me, Lord. And they, they, they love that. But then when it's something difficult, when it's something that has adversity, many say no. When the mission is hard or it makes us uncomfortable, all of them, oh, no. They're not as enthusiastic, right? They're not as excited for that part. But when it's something difficult, it's like, mm, no. But the, the problem is this. Do servants have that choice? You know, do servants have that choice? Are Christians allowed to skip the hard parts? Are Christians allowed to skip the difficult parts because they don't like it, because it makes them feel uncomfortable? I, I don't think so. You know, if you're really trying to follow Jesus and trying to be serious about your faith, I don't think we're allowed to skip the hard parts. I don't think we're allowed to skip the things that make us uncomfortable. The more serious you are about following Jesus, the more you will, the more of a servant you will become. It's not just about reading your Bible. It's not just about praying. Yeah, those things are all great. It's not just about having a spiritual checklist with this with a million rules. It's not about that. It's about love. Are we following the way of love? Because the more you love, the more you will serve others. The more you love, the more you will risk your life. The more you will risk comfort, sacrifice for others, no matter how difficult the part is like servanthood means dedication to God's plan whether you like it or not it's following God through the mountaintops you follow God to the mountaintops but then you also follow him in the valleys through the difficult times it's both we need to have the attitude of servants this attitude of servants when we are working and when we are resting. When we work, it's about serving. It's about serving and doing our best for people. But when we rest, we rest with purpose. Like, for, for example, you know, I love watching sports. I love watching TV. But instead of just watching for myself, I use what I enjoy for a purpose. 
I t- try to make relationships with people. I try to build community through these events. You know, another thing I do is that I, I purposefully, no, this is hard. I, I, I try my best, but I purposely try not to binge TV shows. Like I put a limit, I put a cap, put a cap on it. Oh, no, that's a cap, cap on my watching. But I do it intentionally so that I could use the remainder of the time of my time to either read a book, spend time with God and spend time with family or making sacrifices to make church work. Like recently it's been hard to engage. Like I totally admit it. Like I have difficulty engaging sometimes. I I get distracted Um, and I get often distracted by all, all this unusual circumstances like this pandemic that we are in. But frankly, I have to keep fighting through this difficulty. I have to keep going because I really believe I have to give God my best effort. You know, just like with my spouse or with my kids, they expect effort. They expect that I'm going to try for them. Why is it so different with God? You know, with our families, with our spouse, our boyfriend, our girlfriend, you know, they, it's an expectation to give effort. You know, it's, it's a, a given. Then why is it so different with God? It will take initiative. Things don't just happen. It will take initiative to create habits. Because willpower only takes you so far. We are called to serve. We are called to serve God and to serve others. And as it turns out, we are a lot like Frodo and we're a lot like Mary. We have an adventure waiting for us. The adventure is there given to us if we choose. And it's my prayer that we choose the right thing and we do the right thing and we go on an adventure with God and with others too that are on mission with us as well. The Bible tells us the most blessed life is one that is full of worthy trouble. This means that trouble is meant to be part of our stories. It's what makes it exciting. It's what makes it adventurous. So let's embrace a story that is bigger than us, that will require great sacrifice. Let's spend time with people who want to be part of this story too, who are mission-minded. Let's dedicate our lives to serve, just like Mary did. Let's be servants to doing what God wants, whether it's easy, whether it's difficult, and whether we are working or resting. Let's work and rest with purpose with the purpose to serve that's how mary's life became a great story and that's how our lives can be a great story as well let's pray god we thank you for your grace we thank you for your word today god um lord as as we see you know the stories of mary and stories of frodo uh, I, i know a lot of us shy away from trouble. We shy away from adversity. We try to live the most comfortable life. But the question is, does that make a story? Does adversity and pain and trouble make a story great? Would that make our story great as well? Father, you're inviting us to a story that is a great adventure. It's a great adventure that will have difficulties, but it will also have mountaintops just like any great movie. And I pray, Father, that we will be willing, like Mary, to be part of a greater story that's bigger than us. I pray, Father, that we can also serve. That even though the path is difficult, even though we're going to follow you and it's going to be a difficult path, God, we're still called to serve. And just like Mary, she knew the difficulty but yet she chose to serve you anyways. And I pray, Father, that will be her attitude as well. God, we love you, and we lift this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.